my alarm went off, sorry about that. I looked long and hard in that park for a while for a place. I was looking at one unit. They were asking 20G for it. It was newer. Um, the one thing I didn't like about that park was that the trailers were literally right on top of each other. And the place I'm at, we're all spaced out. We actually have a yard. I mean, my side yard here, um, I could literally, it's big enough, I could build an RC car racetrack, which I might do in the winter. Just so I have something to do. Um, but I got a nice big yard. On both sides, actually. On the back side here, on the south side, that's technically the lady's yard next to me. But she's never home. She never does anything outside. Except come outside and smoke a cigarette. So, I essentially have a big yard on both sides. This park that was in Wassa, I mean, they were sandwiched in there tight. And I didn't like that. So this park was created in the 1970s. So the majority of the homes that are in here are from that era. And they are in various states of disrepair because of that. Um, a lot of them were rentals. So when you have a rental, you have a tenant that doesn't care. It's not his place. He doesn't care. So he just lets it go to hell, etc. Um, prior to the new owners coming in, who I think are pretty, pretty stellar, uh, I've been talking to people in this park. The previous owner of this park was a slumlord, and he just didn't, he didn't give a crap about anything. So nothing got fixed, and it was bad. But there are units in this park that are newer and modern, and there's people in this park that are really taking care of their place. Take Connie, for example, across the road. Her place is awesome. I've been inside it. It's amazing inside. I've been outside it. Her husband, who passed away, um, was fixing that place up all the time. And as a result, it looks great. On the other side, on the other section, there's a couple of people over there. There's a couple of elderly couples that have decided this is where they're, this is their forever home. This is where they're going to retire. So they've invested money in a concrete driveway, a garage, landscaping, really nice looking stuff. <clears throat> so my line of thinking is, yeah, there's some eyesores in here. But if I can make my place look really nice, like Connie's and the people on the other side, when it comes time to sell, I possibly can make a profit with very little investment. All these shows on TV, these flipping real estate shows that you see on TV where people buy a rundown place and they stick a little bit of money into it and it turns into something awesome and then they turn around and they make a profit. Flipping real estate is a big thing right now. Uh, it's possible with where I'm at. You know, I'm an optimist, remember? I'm not a pessimist. So I'm always thinking, trying to think the positive. So... I think I might have a financial, I don't want to say a gold mine, but I might have a financial, uh, uh, good situation here in the future. But, I don't know, who knows. So yeah, last night was not good. And I thought we were making headway. So... Um, different subject. So last night after supper, it was about 6.30, I actually did put on the clothes and go outside. And uh, 
I got on the on this north wall underneath the bathroom. Well, there was a whole stretch on the outer edge of the unit. <clears throat> All the way from the bedroom, halfway into the bedroom, all the way up to darn near here in the kitchen that was totally wide open. Another case where water had run down the siding of the building, migrated underneath, you know, came around the corner, migrated underneath, got the insulation wet, it got heavy, and it just ripped off the side of the, ripped off the underside of the building. So there was a, oh, how many feet was that? 12, 15 foot section there run that was just wide open, <clears throat> raw floorboards. So that's the stretch I did last night uh, because I was able to take long pieces of insulation and tuck them up under the girders, the outrigger girders, the metal outriggers, and fill up a whole cavity in one long run. Um, the roll of insulation I got was 24 inches wide. And the spacing between the floor joists is 24 inches wide. So I was able to, <clears throat> one piece I had was <clears throat> darn near 12 feet long. I was able to tuck it up over the metal girders and just pull it along, pull it along. Filled up that whole cavity in one run. <coughs> so I got a lot of the, I used up all my insulation. I got to go get another roll. Thank goodness those only cost stuff I got is only 25 bucks a roll, so that ain't so bad. Um, and I'm not going to need the whole roll. I mean, I just got a couple more bays that are totally empty. The rest of them I'm going to try to salvage what's there because it's not totally blown out. I'm going to salvage what's there, and I'm going to just push it back up and secure it. Um, so I, I got that whole north side insulated. I came back in the house here. For some reason, <clears throat> I thought it was going on 9 o'clock. And uh, so I came back in the house here, and I took off all my work clothes and thought, well, I'll settle down for an hour here and wind down and then go to sleep. And I look at the clock, and it's 7 o'clock, 7-something. I'm like, what? <clears throat> How did I read that wrong? It's because I'm crazy, man. I'm, I'm totally crazy. I'm like, well, it's warm out. I have lighting under there now. I'm not going to sit here for three hours and watch TV when the whole point of me busting my tail all day long as hard as I could and as fast as I could was to get home and get the stuff done. So I put my clothes back on and went back out there. Uh... The Tyvek, I, I got everything all tyvek and secured. Now, I was, I, I thought I had a, uh, an issue, a logistical issue with trying to um, secure the Tyvek and secure the metal screening because there's no... There's two big I-beams that run down the middle of this trailer, all right? And they're spaced four feet apart or five feet apart. <clears throat> and that's the main frame of the trailer. And then there's outriggers that come off, triangular-shaped metal outriggers that come off those I-beams and run out to the edges. There's girders that go between those I-beams in the middle. Those pieces are made out of metal. And they're right up tight to the under cladding on the trailer. So that original cardboard stuff that I showed you many videos back when I started this, that's what the manufacturer used to hold up the insulation in the floor. That's the stuff that has the X cut in the middle so they could stick their nozzle in there from their insulation and blow the insulation into the cavities. Well, over the years, 
that has gotten damp and has relaxed and is starting to belly. Sag. Um, there's no way, there's no floor joist running the length of this building right on top of that I-beam. It's, it's offset on either side of it. In this case, it's to the inset of the unit, so it's in the middle. So when I was underneath there looking how I was going to do this, yeah, the insul laying the insulation in there, that was easy because it just went right up into the cavity. I stapled it up, and uh, that was fine. But now, what am I going to attach the moisture barrier to, and what am I going to attach the metal screening to? I've got the, there's a sill on the outside that runs on this wall right here, and then 24 inches in, there's a floor joist that runs right underneath me, literally. I'm sitting on it, actually. And then there's another one, 24 inches from that. But the frame, the steel I-beam, is in between that. So there's nothing to secure anything to at that point. And I'm thinking, oh, geez, i got to run a board the whole length of this, secure the board to the I-beam, and it's just so i got something to staple and, and nail to. By accident... I discovered that I can take my fingers and I can get them between the top of that I-beam and that black cardboard cladding. It, it compresses, it moves. <clears throat> so what I literally did was I took, instead of running the, the moisture barrier the length of the unit, I cut it into short sections and ran it parallel and just overlapped them. Um, and then when I got to the I-beam, I just tucked it over the top of the I-beam between the cladding and the I-beam. And then when I pulled my fingers out, the weight of the insulation that's above the cladding pushed down on top of the I-beam and held it tight. Oh, like, sweet. So once I discovered that, I just went outside and I was cutting along with those pieces. 48 inches long. Yeah, that's about 48 inches here. I was just cutting 48 inches pieces of, of house wrap, stapling them on this edge, stapling them on, stretching it tight, stapling them on the, on the center floor joist, and then just tucking them over the top of the I-beam, and I was done. The whole north section's been vapor buried. Now, when I go to do this metal screening, it's easy peasy. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to run that the same way. You know, opposite of the run of the trailer. Same length sections, 48 inches. And on the one end, I'm going to pound my, my, wa my special washer securing nails. Uh, these are nails that got a big metal washer on them. They're used for attaching concrete board to walls. That's what I got them for is when I do the fireplace. But they're working perfect for this. So I run a row of nails on the outer sill here. I run a row of nails on the joist, on the floor joist underneath me. And then I tuck the other end over on top of the I-beam between the cladding. Bada bing, bada boom. Straight, flat, totally secured. It's not coming out of there. So tonight, after work. I haven't looked at my route, but tonight after work, I'm going to knock that out. Then I'll have this whole north section, you know, it's it's damn near a 15-foot run or more. That'll all be done, buttoned up. I've got uh, the electrical cable access pipe that I put in. i got to cut around that. But then this whole north section, under... The bathroom sink and the kitchen sink, which was important to me because, um, you know, that's that's water. You know, that's a water line. I remember last winter when I was in here, um, I got worried because I would open up the cabinets under the kitchen sink and just get hit with this blast of cold air. And I thought, ooh, I'm going to have stuff freezing under here. Um, yeah, that, that worry is going to be gone. So... Made some progress. Um, yeah. So, 
today after work or during work, I don't know yet, if I end up up in the Rhinelander area, which is where they usually send me on Tuesdays, they have a Menards, I might take my lunch break and stop in there and get another roll of insulation. Um, and uh, tonight when I get home, I'll just... I'll just finish up the screening work, you know, the metal screening. And uh, that whole north side is, is done, except for the corner up here. So, made more progress than I actually thought I was going to. And the warm, I'm watching the weather now, and the warm weather is supposed to last, I think, right up to the weekend. Uh, temps aren't supposed to drop until like Friday or Saturday. So that'll be a good thing. So it's supposed to rain, but if I got to be out there in a rain suit, so be it. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the diva's not going to talk to me today. I don't know why she can't see the rose for the thorns or the forest for the trees I don't think that last video I made was bad at all. I don't think I was picking on her. I don't think I was pounding on her. I, I wasn't cutting her down. I was just stating some facts and some opinions. You know, stuff that she's actually told me with her own mouth. You know, when somebody sits on the couch and they're stone cold sober and they look at you and they say, I don't want to have to struggle in life. I have some concerns about you. Um, you know, what else could it be except money, finances, you know, she wants an easy life and she's worried that being with me is going to be a struggle, paycheck to paycheck, no extra money for fun or fancy things, you know, I, it's just the impression I get, she denies it. But then 30 minutes later, she basically admits it. So, oh, God. I don't know. She's a struggle, that's for sure. But anyway, I'm going to get going and get ready for work here and knock this day out as well. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side.